our underground earth bag bedroom. Probably one of the most comfortable off-grid bedrooms you'll ever see. The next part of our house is started, girl. You need dirt if you're gonna build with dirt bags. Time to get these walls up. Oh yeah, he's angry now. Coming out here, working on a project like this. I mean, it's kind of do or die, sink or swim for us. It's been a lot of work. So we just went off into the middle of the desert. Now it's time to get serious. Just turning that pile of dirt up there into a home. There's something empowering about that. Time to rock and roll. Use that creative energy that everyone has and there's a lot you can accomplish. I can't wait, I can't wait. Pretty soon we're gonna have a house. It seems magical. How's it going everyone? You're watching The Green Dream Project. Jim here. And Jessica. And together we live in Southeast Arizona, off-grid, reliant on 100% solar, 100% rainwater. We're in the midst of building our house out of earth bags. The whole reason we moved out here is because we wanted to live a happier, healthier, and more sustainable life. And building this house is a huge part of that. So we live in a somewhat arid area. There's not a lot of local resources as far as building materials. So building with earth is a way that we can make use of what we have right here on the property and build a home that's affordable and durable too. It's the best house our money could buy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we started out excavating three large pits and with that material that was dug out we built first a cistern that's going to feed water into our house and provide all of our water for our household needs and then the first part of the house we completed was the root cellar now since we're planning on producing almost all of the food we eat right here on our land we need some good food storage space and now we've built Probably one of the most important rooms in the house. A place we're gonna be spending every night. Was it like one third of our lives or something? One like third of our lives. <laughs> Very important part of the house. We built an underground bedroom. You know, this is where the magic happens. So much time went into this, so many adventures. Let's check it out. We're gonna start on the next portion of the house, our underground earth bag bedroom. We're going to turn this hole in the ground into probably one of the most comfortable off-grid bedrooms you'll ever see. Imagine that, sleeping underground, constant temperatures all year round, perfect darkness. Oh, that's the best kind of sleep you'll ever get. That's what we're aiming for here. I think it'll be wonderful. First off, it's just a mess down there. It's just a literal raw hole that the excavator dug out. So we're going to go in, smooth things out, move things around there. Then we're going to find out where we want the center of this underground cylinder to be. And then we're going to start digging out a trench. So it's a lot of work, a lot of dirt to move. So much like we did with the cistern, much like we did with the root cellar, we're going to start with our pole compass. We figured out this is about where we want the center to be. So I'm just going to dig a little two foot hole about, drop this in, we'll get the pole compass in, and that'll give us a good idea of where we need to kind of clear things out dig our trench, all that. We got an impromptu target set up over here. Don't do this in your own house. You can do this in dirt houses. So I'm still working on trying to get the ground for the underground portion of our house leveled. I need to get a little trench dug, but the cool thing is our compass is in place, that's ready to go. And so more digging in my future. What can you do? When you're building your house out of dirt, you gotta expect a little digging. Crew gets crazy in the winter. And he wants to be outside more. But on this particular day, I mean, he was going nuts. I'm like, I gotta take him out. I gotta just burn off some of this energy he's got. So we just went off into the middle of the desert. 
and he seemed like he had a purpose. He was moving, he was moving fast. But then eventually we finally came upon that treasure trove of bones. First it was just like some vertebrae, some tiny bones, but he was kind of sniffing around. Finally he found that shoulder blade. That was his favorite one, at least his first one that he came to. But when he came across the cow skull, I mean that was probably the holy grail to him. I could see in his dog mind trying to figure out how he was going to bring that back. But I made the decision easy for him and I just picked up the cow skull, he had his bone, and then we made the long trek back to the car. Let me tell you, having a giant cow skull in one hand and Kita in the other, that makes for a tough hike. When I got back, I brought crew in, put the skull out, and then like, I gotta tell Jess, come on, come on, come outside. And then uh, what did you think of when you first saw it? Well, I thought it was pretty cool. You know, I've seen people have cow skulls and they kind of decorate with them. And we've seen kind of remnants of dead cattle around, but never a whole skull. Never a whole skull like that. And this was, it looked like maybe a longhorn or something. It had these really large horns on it. So it was it, pretty impressive looking. Sometimes you just got to take the dog for a walk and you never know what adventures you might get into. That's right, we just got 14 and a half tons of gravel delivered. I think it'll be more than enough for what we need for our underground bedroom. I gotta get the rest of this filled. Hopefully we can get to doing the bags. But I was about to head down and just level out this gravel down there. Then I saw this guy. Please be careful. Careful's my middle name. Oh yeah, he's angry now. There he is, y'all. We're starting course number one of our underground earth bag bedroom. You excited to get back into the bag work? Yep. We're digging dirt right from the middle of the ground here. We got a lot of extra dirt from when I dug this trench here. And we're getting a little bit of dirt uh, from the sides. So Jim did an excellent job of tamping all the bags flat. Before we lay any more bags, I have to put down a couple strands of barbed wire. The barbed wire acts as sort of a mortar in between the courses of bags so that they don't shift and it adds a lot of tensile strength. So it's really important. We're about to start course number two. We're moving on up pretty quick already, aren't we? Yeah. You ready? Course number two? She's been ready. Another big question is we don't have a whole lot more loose soil down here. So that might be a little tricky. Yeah. We're down to the last two bags. And I'm digging a giant crater into the crater. We 
with Jess. What do you think? The next part of our house has started, girl. <laughs> I got to get plastic around these edges. I got to start backfilling. And I got to get a whole lot of gravel in here. So that's a whole lot of work I got to do. Plus it's windy. But to get around this whole bedroom, I would probably need at least 75 feet of plastic. And the only way I think I could do that is if I get something special ordered. So I got three smaller bags of plastic. And I'll kind of place that around there and just kind of overlap the ends. But before I can put the plastic on, I'm gonna to need to glue my ABS together. It'll make gluing a lot harder afterwards. Like a glove. We're all set. Easy peasy. Ooh, all right. Just as I'm about to lose the rest of my light, I finished getting the moisture barrier around the bags. Now whether we're set with the radon pipe and the moisture barrier, then I could go ahead and start backfilling around the bags and get some gravel in the middle. Then we're ready to start building again. Time to get these walls up. So back down at the bottom of the earth bag bedroom. Gonna finish with the radon pipe, get that attached. Gonna get my holes drilled. Now that I got the radon pipe in place, time to start sending gravel down. I have a lot of gravel I gotta send down here. So I am going to be busy. Time to rock and roll. Time to get this gravel down here. Time to finish off this floor. This has been a lot of work. Backfilling, gravel, it takes time. But we're getting there. Two courses done. Now that we got the backfilling done, the plastic in place, the gravel in place, I think we're ready to move on from here. So I think coming up we'll probably get another course done, but we have to make sure we have all of our plans in place. We need to know exactly where we want the stairs, we need to know where we want the electrical outlets. All that has to get done coming up soon. Once we get this underground portion done, then we can start building up from there. I can't wait, I can't wait. Pretty soon we're gonna have a house. So Jessica's laying down a course of barbed wire, and then we're gonna get started on course number three. So I am going to get our dirt chute ready. I think our dirt chute will be paramount to filling up some of these bags. And then I gotta get dirt ready. You need dirt if you're gonna build with dirt bags. Now personally, I think with the chute, things move along pretty fast. So I think we'll be able to knock this course out in no time. That is the bone, eh? He's just moving it around back and forth. There's two big bones in play right now. <laughs> that one, which I don't know, it's a femur or something, and, and the shoulder blade. There's two bones in play. It's a foul crew. Because it's getting colder, I've not talked about this before, but crew's got a lot of energy, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take this guy out for a walk, tire him out. Picked up a couple of treasures again. That's his little find. Ended up carrying that all the way back to the car. Remember that? Remember that? <laughs> my bones! It's my bones! He's like, I know exactly what that is. Put it down! <laughs> now that the filling's done, time for the tamping. That's where my specialty comes in. Time to show these bags who's boss. Beat them into submission. Now it's time to get serious because now I gotta add the first stair to our new staircase for your underground earth bag bedroom. Let's put it in. Usually I put these stairs in and then I, got, I have to prop it up on the end somehow. But I'm probably gonna put uh, something in here to support these ends for right now so we can use them. But uh, I think I'm going to some other kind of support system in the future. Right now these boards are going to want to slip down, so I just need something in the meantime to keep these boards up. With course number four done, if 
this bill that goes along like the root cellar. We are a quarter of the way done. Just turning that pile of dirt up there into a home. There's something empowering about that. Honestly, when you were younger, did you ever think you would build your own house? <laughs> and if you did, did you ever think you would build it out of dirt? Now, you've, you've lived in a family where your grandfather built a house for his family. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandfather's motives were to provide for his family. And, you know, he wasn't a rich man or anything, but he knew how to work hard. And he would just figure things out as he went a lot of times. And so I think that really helped me, you know, knowing, like, you can work hard, you can be creative, and you can figure out ways to make things work and to make a good life. So I think that's what we're trying to do here. And just the thought of turning a pile of dirt into something. Uh, we're building this house on a shoestring budget and we don't know all the things, you know, this is a lot of this is new territory. We've never built a house before. Yeah, so I mean, we're on our third really earthen build. We're getting a lot more confidence. We're learning what we need to do as we go along. And really, it's that work ethic of just getting out there every day, moving some dirt, filling some bags, mm -hmm. stacking them up. That's not to say we haven't done a bunch of research before going into this. I mean, by all means, do that research. Read some books, watch some videos. <laughs> <laughs> Learn how to do things, how not to do things, and, and then the empower yourself and use that creative energy that everyone has, and there's a lot you can accomplish. The point is, is to get started. Build something small, work up that confidence, and into larger things. It's just crazy, yet yeah, being creative, doing that work ethic, and taking that pile of dirt and turning it into a house that we're going to live in. It's just remarkable it seems magical but, <laughs> you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be practical too. you know I'll tell you it's gonna feel a lot more magical once we move in <laughs> <laughs> you know this is absolutely the perfect time to be doing this kind of work the temperatures have, are just absolutely perfect and even though it's a lot of hard work all the shoveling all the fill in the bags all the tamping you can just take a break you can stop for a moment and just breathe in fresh, clean air of the country. Being out in the middle of the desert, it's incredible. I'm gonna jump down there, grab the tamper tool, tamp it down a little bit could be one of the most important parts about backfilling around this. You want the earth around the bags to be nice, solid, and tight. So I need to make a few Velcro plates for the stair, a couple for the electrical boxes. I'm simply using uh, some of the scrap OSB from the root cellar build. I'm going to attach a couple of 2x4s to these and we should be good to go. Mjolnir! So really I'm just marking out where the bed is going to be down here and then I can plan out where I should put the electrical boxes. I'm going to put one on either side just so she doesn't even need electrical boxes down here but I'm always thinking better to have some and not need them than want them and then not have them. So. I think it's better sometimes to have too many outlets than not enough. I'm looking for it to be one foot above the floor, so this should be just about the right height. We're going to have two outlets, one on each side of the bed. This will be the second one. All right, I think we're looking real nice. Now that everything's backfilled, now that I got the cleats in place, I think we're ready for the next course. I'm excited. Time to keep putting up these walls. Back out here, we got Jessica out here. Time to start with the barbed wire. She's being blinded. <laughs> so this course was a little bit different than the other ones because we had to put in these Velcro plates or cleats. Those terms are interchangeable, I think. So we did the barbed wire a little differently, just kind of 
looped it around um, so we didn't have to make a bunch of cuts. It's that time again. It's that time again. I'm so, I, I wish I could have shown you guys where he got that bone from. Oh, he made himself a little crater there. I think he was upset that it was like out. Yeah, that's right. When I was back filling, I uncovered it. He's like, oh, I gotta hide this good. <laughs> One question that we've been getting asked, probably a good question. Why don't we just move the chute over to where the dirt pile is, shovel the dirt from the pile right into the chute. It would be a good idea, but we need to mix it with water. The water's probably like super important. It's gotta get mixed and it's gotta get mixed as thoroughly as possible. So my thinking is it actually saves time in the mixing process. So I can shovel the dirt into the wheelbarrow, sprinkle some water, and I can do that in layers. Then it kind of gets mixed again when I shovel it out of the wheelbarrow into the chute. And with uh, our clay soil, I find that, you know, it clumps up really easy water, really wants to stick inside there. So yes. as much as you can kind of get that worked around, the better. That's one of the difficult things about trying to do this with uh, um, like an electric mixer, do you uh, add in a whole bunch of clay soil? Once you, you put that water in there, the bunch just clumps into balls. Yeah, that is a nice thing about using the chute. It's like another way of mixing the soil and delivering it at the same time. Now, I'm just putting a two by four down here uh, temporarily to kind of support the end here. It's definitely not going to be a permanent solution to supporting the stair, it's just temporary. So Jess is already following up behind me, getting the barbed wire ready. I'm gonna slip on some gloves, give her a hand. I'm gonna kinda of go up on top, guide the wire. I think it makes this whole process a little faster. Uh, a little less dangerous, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Building an underground structure, any kind of underground structure, poses particular challenges. But Earth Bay construction underground poses a specific set of challenges. I um, think there are a lot of underground earth bag structures that we've seen. Not too many people are doing. But we have come across some. Some have been successful, some not so much. Now why is it? What's the big difference? There's some things that you have to keep in mind when building any kind of earth bag structure, but it becomes critical when working underground and there's certain things that are just gonna make it stronger and more likely to succeed. We've definitely put a lot of thought into building it underground before we decided to make that move. It's not just something that we decided, hey, this would be kind of a cool thing to do. <laughs> One thing to consider that I know of off the top of my head is where you are located. You gotta consider the environment. Yeah, before you even start building, you wanna design it for your climate and for the environment that it's in for the specific site. So there's certain areas where it's probably not a good idea to build an underground earth bag structure. You probably could, but I don't know if it would be worth the risk and worth the work involved in order to make it successful. So obviously we're building in a dry climate. The soil seems to be really stable. Even before we bought this property, we did some research on the land, the topography, the climate, the water table, the way that water moves across the land. So we had a pretty good idea what we were getting into before we started building here. When you do start building, you want to have the right materials. Before we started doing some of our bigger builds, we did some test projects. And one thing that we learned was the types of bags that you use can make a difference. So usually what is used in earth bag building is woven polypropylene bags. And we did some smaller projects and we used the woven polypropylene bags. The only problem was they were coated with something. So it didn't allow the soil inside to fully dry out. Definitely get the uncoated kind. You want the bags breathable. It's important to get that transfer of moisture in and out of the bag. The cool thing about earth bags is the bags themselves act as a mechanical stabilizer. The bags do a lot to keep the integrity as solid bricks. 
We're using soil right here from our property and we did a lot of testing on it. And the makeup of our soil, we felt pretty comfortable building with. So definitely do your testing beforehand. Another potential mistake you can make with earth bags is not putting barbed wire between your courses, especially underground. Not only does it lock the layers in place, but it provides that tensile strength. Any kind of lateral support underground is really important. 12 gauge barbed wire, four prong. Yep, that's what we use. And we do two strands in between every course. So after we got done with the bags and the barbed wire yesterday, I still had a lot of energy and I was trying to work some things through in my mind. I knew that that course was going to be the last course that we could use the dirt chute. It's just getting too high, the chute comes up over the bags down to the floor and there's just not enough room to maneuver. Because I felt it was still a fantastic way for Jess and I to work together, I modified the dirt chute. We're gonna find out if it works real soon here. I wanna see how this handles the dirt. So far, so good. Let's load it up. So far, I'm impressed with my work. Not only was I able to scoop the dirt in there without this thing shifting or buckling or anything like that, but it can hold a whole wheelbarrow's worth of dirt. Now Jess is going to start scooping. She's going to see how that works and uh, whether it holds up to the rigorous things she puts it through while scooping the dirt out. You ready? Ready. Another thing with walls, you definitely need that lateral support, especially building underground. It's super important. Underground, the walls are going to be under the pressure of the earth around it. Now we're building a round structure. That's like the ultimate buttressing. Especially when you're building with earth bag, round is sound. I've lived in some buildings that were not earth bag that had drainage issues in basements in wetter climates. We are using a plastic barrier around our walls. It may not be necessary for our climate. Yeah, we're doing it just as a precautionary thing. We have a gravel foundation that provides a capillary break is important for an earth bag structure. You need something that's gonna prevent water from wicking up into the walls. We're specifically paying a lot of attention to what happens outside on the ground surface. The way that we design our underground portions of our house, they're a little smaller than the above ground portions. The outer walls are wider and it's going to protect this area even more. And in addition to that, we'll have proper drainage of water coming off the house. Obviously, we're gonna be collecting that rainwater. We'll be doing earthworks, possibly French drains or swales. Make sure there's no water getting in around near the foundation. I think the chute did really well for us. Uh, otherwise, I would have had to bring the wheelbarrow over, scoop out the cans, and then she would have had to have waited while I filled up another wheelbarrow and brought it over. So to me, I think the new chute really saved a lot of time. Yeah, I think it did. Now, what are your thoughts? You actually thought it was a little easier, didn't you? Yeah, because now I'm standing next to it, I'm kind of scooping down from above. It's a little bit easier to scoop the dirt out. So a little bit easier. So that's a winner, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Camping is another big part of this whole process. Everything needs to be compacted. That makes it a lot stronger. You get that uh, bonus of building the upper body strength. So strong walls, strong upper body. Who's out there? Who's by the door? Ta da <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Got your bone? Got your bone?
See, that is absolutely why crew has to know you before you come around here. Hang out here. I'll be right back. Ooh. Would you look at that? Beauties, aren't they? Now some friends of ours who built their own home were redoing their windows. Instead of selling them, they called us up. They're like, hey, you think you could use these windows? And they also gave us these too. Bottles for building. We're definitely gonna be able to make use of these. And a whole bucket of tiles. That's just amazing. Tanya, it's always a blessing to have amazing friends like that. It really warms my heart. I mean, we really kind of took a chance. We kind of took a gamble coming out here working on a project like this. I mean, it's kind of do or die, sink or swim for us. To get so much support from family and friends like that is incredible. And uh, all the support from you guys, people uh, watching our videos, giving us thumbs up, sharing our videos, it just, it absolutely means the world to us. It helps keep us going and building our own dream home out here. We're definitely blessed. Time to backfill again. You don't want to go too high on the wall before getting dirt back there. Otherwise, it'll just be a lot harder. Plus, I got to get in there and I got to tamp things down a little bit, get everything sturdy. So, time to pull the plastic over, get this all backfilled. Then I got to make a couple of important additions at this point. You'll see what I mean coming up. Fair number four going in. Number four, halfway there. All right, placing in the cleat for, it's gonna be for a light switch. Gotta make sure all your electrical stuff is placed ahead of time. Definitely will be beneficial. So initially when we started this build, I thought this build was gonna be kind of more complicated than it was. How many different designs have we gone through for this bedroom? I don't even know. Too many to count. And we're still, we were making uh, changes last minute. That's something I usually don't like doing. I'm kind of person that likes to have everything planned out in detail. And you kind of did, really. What do you think is the difference? Is it actually seeing the space and kind of interacting with that space? I think so. While we're working, while we're actually in the space, you know, we're kind of talking and coming up with ideas and we might think of different ways of doing things. We're gonna get this knocked out in no time. Let me hear the lions roar. Roar. <laughs> yeah! Ah! Now being flexible is good, but you kinda do wanna be prepared, especially after you start building an earth bag structure. Cause if you are going to be like nailing things into the wall, if you're gonna have things attached to the wall, you need to plan that out ahead of time. So when we're talking about changing the cabinets, you're talking about like, oh, what are we gonna do for storage space down there? I got to thinking, oh man, we've already started building this. We really need to come up with a solid idea of what we wanna do. I actually then kinda hit the, hit the books, did some drawings, came up with this cabinet design and what it tied into the walls. I think it ended up looking pretty good. But then Jessica saw it, she scratched it all out. <laughs> actually, I think, uh, my idea kind of gave you the basis for what you ended up doing. Yeah, it sparked a different idea. So just finished the tamping. About to put the stair in. Just because wasting no time, she got out here, do the barbed wire. And she's so focused, she's ignoring everything I'm saying. <laughs> or maybe she just normally ignores everything I'm saying. I don't know. So we're still actually kind of kind of doing my idea, but we're changing it up. My idea was mainly all out of wood and it had been attached to the wall. You're gonna take a different direction. Actually, I feel like you have been really kind of in love with the idea of utilizing cob more and actually the sculptural potential that, that has. I'd like to do a lot of cob work in the house. So while the main structure is going to be the earth bags, I think a lot of other elements are going to end up being cob. I really like that because we can use a lot of the resources around here just using more earth. Another nice thing about the cob, like you said, it's 
very sculptural. Plus, if we end up not liking how it looks, you can completely reuse cab, tear it down, add some water, remix it, and use it for something else. I'm okay with it. Made all these courses is so much simpler, but it is gonna add more work down the road. And building cob shelves is probably gonna take a little bit of time and effort. Plans do change. Uh, it's good to be flexible when you can, but be very careful when building with earth. It's good to have a solid plan going in, for sure. But we feel comfortable making those changes this far along. So look forward to that, that should be interesting. I can't wait to get to building shelves out of dirt. So I'm gonna put an addition on here. Got my trusted Odie's, and I'm just gonna attach the pipe. I got my coupler, got a little pipe there. Screw them all together. And that should do it. It's incredible the amount of dirt it takes not only to fill these bags, but to do the backfill. He was looking at me, then he saw I brought the camera over, then he quickly looked away. He's so camera shy. Huh? This guy hates the camera, he's like, oh, he's coming back. Oh, he's got a camera. You like that? <laughs> he's like, oh, he's still got the camera. Mm -hmm. I know this guy's tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. You gonna show mommy what you brought? What'd you get? You gonna show mommy what you brought home? You got a new treasure? Oh, new bone. <laughs> With the cooler weather, this guy has just been going out of his mind. I think, you know, he's probably getting bored, probably getting anxious, got a lot of energy to burn. So I took him for a long walk. Again, we made it to the dead cow, and he, he brought this thing all the way back. This thing is huge. I also grabbed a little souvenir to bring back home. This is crazy. Oh, hey. It's like the, uh, the bottom part of the jaw. Mm. Now do we have the full <laughs> We might have the skull? we might have the full skull. Minus some teeth. You guys have some weird morbid habits. <laughs> oh there is ice on here. Oh well. I guess that shouldn't surprise me yet. The temperatures did get pretty low last night. But uh, as the temperatures get colder, we're gonna have to be aware of that and we might have to adjust our building to that a little bit. We'll probably talk a little bit more of that as it comes to it, but we might need to protect the bags from freezing. Uh-oh. Gonna have to bury his bone right away. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the best spot to bury that. <laughs> Don't let me forget that he put that bone there. <laughs> I can't believe he jumped down there. <laughs> he's like, that's the perfect spot. <laughs> he doesn't care how he's gonna get out. He's... It should be interesting to see how he gets out. Good job. Get out. Oh, there he goes. So I gotta make sure I get everything ready to continue on with the build. I got stair number six in place. Looking real good. Adjust the pole compass, make sure everything's level. Oh, 
How many bones does this mean he's buried in places where I need to put backfill? <laughs> At least two. If you want, you can go ahead and backfill this whole thing for me. <laughs> That's a job well done. First bag of course number 14. So it's already kind of late in the day. So we're gonna try something a little experimental here. We're just gonna try and get as far as we can with this uh, particular course, and we're just gonna let it be. You would actually be against tamping this tonight, right? Yeah. Now the temperatures are gonna drop real low tonight, probably be below freezing. So what we're thinking is, is because if you tamp it down and then water does freeze, that expansion and contraction of the, the ice in there could end up breaking up the compression strength. So we're just going to leave it untamped. We'll tamp it in the morning or as soon as we're done and then should give it some time to uh, soak in some of that solar energy. But it got cold. One of the jugs over there that I had filled yet the other day is pretty much frozen this morning. It's not frozen solid but definitely a lot of ice in there. Gotta patrol the bedroom area. Last bag, here we go. <laughs> that seemed anticlimactic. Things are just starting to take shape and it's just, it's so amazing. It's becoming a house. <laughs> so anyway, we're crazy excited. Uh, this is so amazing to see, but there is so much work still left to be done. Very exciting, but we still have a lot to do before we can move on. Right now, I'm gonna get the compass out of there. We don't need that anymore. We're done building the wall. The boss is calling y'all. Gotta get out there. Oh! angry. Get to work! He's angry. Look at that. Staring right at the camera too. Like you get out here. Get back to work. Oh, camera's out now. You're not such a tough guy. So before I get too crazy with the backfilling, I'm going to add an addition to our radon pipe. Might as well get it done now. That way I don't have to dig it out and fill it and then dig it out again later. That's probably gonna be the easiest part of the whole job. And I'm coming in. <laughs> so what you doing on the inside here? What you working on? Some final house plans. Top secret stuff over here. Can't show it. Top secret plans. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. It's beautiful out here. And as you can see from behind me, yeah, we got the rain. Some of you might be wondering how the bags are doing. The build's just fine. I know some people were worried about the rain. Hey, if it gets rain, that's gonna turn into a swimming pool. No swimming pool. Bags are completely intact. Everything looks good. But you did notice something, didn't you? You were stepping on the bags. The top course is a little soft. And some of these bags might be a little bit soft. Let's, uh, let's go check that out. Let's see how, if there's any softness to some of the lower bags. Let's take them down there and let's take, let's take a look. I don't know what you think, but I think it's just the top layer that's really got wet. These feel, they still feel hard, hard as a rock. Maybe some of these did absorb a little moisture, but nothing too bad. 
but even still I'm not worried about it at all in fact I think it's a, it's a plus now correct me if I'm wrong Jess but some of these layers might get a little wet but then it might actually dry stronger than they were initially that's what I've heard I think the rain for these things is positive so with that rainfall that we had the other night I just had the idea it might be cool to get out here and just tamp some of the high spots that we had. I mean, with these bags as soft as they are, I can probably knock them down at least almost another inch. Now I'm ready to get this thing capped off. So first up on my list in order to get this flooring slash ceiling done is to make my specialized cleats for the joists. Now I got a whole lot of these to make. I'm gonna burn and oil all the pieces going on to these cleats, except for the OSB. Nothing like a little fire on a cold day. Then I gotta cut uh, some OSB into 12 by 12 sections. Getting them boards cut, y'all getting them boards cut. So if you've been around with us long enough to see us put together the root cellar, you know what this is. But if you haven't, I just basically took a couple of boards, screwed them to our table here, this is kind of what I've been using to put together these specialized cleats for the joists. You just take a couple of boards, put them right in between, perfectly measured, perfectly spaced. I got a spacer in here just to keep these at the, uh, the proper distance. Then I put my OSB or my plywood on top, then I just screw them in. Simple as that. Now I got a whole bunch of these to put together. <laughs> All set. These will allow us to attach the joists to the earth bags. We'll be able to attach these to the earth bags, then sandwich the joists in between here, and then get everything nice and secure. So I'm gonna spread these around our underground earth bag room, and once I get some help from Jess, we'll start moving some of these two by tens in place. So I got our wood uncovered, waiting for Jess to come out. We're gonna get this stuff in place. All right, Jess, thanks for your help getting these boards out. Wrong. She's the best. We just moved these boards out here. They're not in their final destination. I'm gonna be measuring these boards, leveling these boards. Then we'll pull them out, treat them, then get them in their final resting spot their final destination. Okay, so uh, looks like that's gonna be the higher board, huh? Yep. Water level comes in handy in a lot of different situations. So one thing I'm doing this time that I didn't do last time is just to tamp down some of the high spots. So if I can tamp those down, then it should be easier to adjust the rest of the boards. So Jess and I just ran a string line from one side to the other. Then I'll raise up any of the uneven boards to meet that string. Then we should be all level going all the way across. I'm gonna secure these cleats in place so that when we start pulling these boards out, they won't shift at all. But I feel like I've learned so much I feel like this is going already a lot smoother than it did the last time. I noticed the bags here were a lot more level around the top than the one over there. And there's lots of other issues with this build that I think we're taking care of in this one. It's gonna make it a lot better. One, the leveling. A lot of people said bring out the string level, and I think getting the two by tens in place was just a lot easier than the way I was doing it the last time with all the levels. I think every part of this has gone just a little bit smoother than the last build, wouldn't you say? It definitely helps to have experience. I think your bag work is just absolutely phenomenal. Going from the cistern to the root cellar and even to this, I mean... Yeah, each time it's gotten better. Each time has gotten better. It's amazing. And faster. And my, my work here with the flooring, I think it's looking a, a lot better than the last time as well. So I'm going to get Jess out here. What we're going to do is we're going to pull these individually out. I'll prep them, we'll put them back, and then I'll secure them together. 
then hopefully that way they won't warp. So we get a lot of questions about what I do out here with the burning of the wood, burning, scrubbing, oiling, and stuff like that. The technique I've been using is called shosugiban. Or yakisugi. And it's a Japanese technique used for uh, preserving and protecting the wood. Kind of a little bit more natural way of protecting the wood. Kind of reduces like chemicals of having treated wood and whatnot. This is a technique that has been used in Japan for a very long time. They used a Japanese cedar, which is probably the best wood for that technique, but I think you can use it on pretty much any wood. I guess we have our modern spin on that. And we just use a propane torch. And I just torch the heck out of it. So burn, scrub, oil it, and then you're good. It's supposed to last a long time. Yeah, it's supposed to make it more weather resistant. Um, weather resistant, pest resistant. Uh, flame resistant. So once you torch it, then it's harder <laughs> to torch it again. Yeah. And what else? What, oh. else, do you, what else do you need? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do to lock these boards in place is to get some of these timber lock screws in on the ends, and then I'll brace up the middle. I figure if they're locked into the ends, it might keep them from twisting a bit, but then I'll get the middle locked in, then the ends locked in. What I've been doing is using a combination of screws and nails. Nails going straight into the board, and I use these screws at the angle just to keep everything locked in tight. Good morning, crew. Good morning. Ah! <laughs> so what do you think of the framing I did here, or the floor? It looks good. It looks, it looks, it looks okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, definitely a lot less warping this time than with the root cellar. Uh, things are looking a lot better. Perfect? No. But has anything I ever done out here perfect? But now I got to do the subfloor. I got to get the subfloor on there. I got to get it covered. Then we got to get it sealed. So as you can see, I've laid out my cinder blocks. I'm going to oil up the OSB. I think it'll offer some protection, maybe not a lot of protection, but a little bit extra since it might be exposed to the elements for a little bit longer. So I'm gonna have Jessica come out here. She's gonna help me. We're gonna bring out the OSB, lay them on the cinder blocks. I'll get it oiled up, then we'll get it attached. I think this should go relatively smoothly, relatively pain-free. Let's get it done, y'all. Good morning. <laughs> How long have you been sitting there like that? <laughs> so camera shy. All right, Jess is out here with me. She's over there. We're about to move the OSB in place. Just get it laid out. You ready over there? Ready. All right. I think it's important to just kind of get the boards out there and uh, see how they look on there because, I mean, we had it on a more east-west orientation rather than north-south and we immediately realized that's the wrong way to go, right? I'm not sure why we did that. That's the exact orientation that we did for the root cellar. The thing is the joists are facing a different way different than direction. the root cellar. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that was my fault. I, I did that, but uh, i got to do it on a case-by-case -case basis because <laughs> Uh, the design of the room dictates a different joist orientation. Uh, so I think it's a good, this is a good layout, right? I, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So we can probably start fastening things down. I just told her, well, I gotta get down there before we start fastening things down and uh, I gotta get the ladder and anything else that down. If I be down there, I gotta bring that up. And this is gonna be sealed for a while. Once we get the, the OSB and the cob around there, we're not going back down there for a while. Probably for might months. be months before we get back down there. So everything's got to be out. How's it feel down here? It feels cool. Do you think it'll be like this temperature all year round? Soak it in, because this is going to be the last time we're down here probably for months. Bye. Bye. 
let's get to fastening these things down. Well, how do you feel about this flooring compared to the root cellar? That was the time we did it the last time. It seemed like it went faster. I feel like it did. Everything's going a little quicker this time than the last time, right? Yeah. Except for the little hiccup when <laughs> we had to flip everything around. Of course, we staggered the, the seams like we did on the root cellar, but the staggering went a lot better this time as well. Again, maybe chalk that up to my uh, to the better job I did with the joists this time than the last time. Definitely hanging over the edge quite a bit in some of these areas. Yeah, because this is a circle, not a square, and we're using rectangular uh, boards. So rectangular boards going into a circular shape. And some of these boards would actually stick out outside of the, <laughs> outside of the house. So we can't have that. So I gotta cut up these boards to fit a little bit better. Then I gotta wrap, then we gotta do some, um, some cobbing. You ready, Jess? Last and final piece. Did it, y'all. <laughs> I just screw this down and we're all set. We did it! I actually think the way I cut the OSB this time versus the root cellar actually turned out a lot better. The cuts are almost symmetrical and it has a kind of, kind of this cool star shape to it. Almost looks like it was done on purpose. All right, y'all, I got out here early, got everything set up. Chicken wire's looking good. Got the dirt ready. Straws ready to go. I even brought out the mixer. I'm hoping that just speeds along the mixing process for doing this cob. Hopefully we can knock this out quick. I'm just gonna dump this whole gallon of water in here. And then we'll just start mixing it up. We'll start getting, tossing some dirt in there, tossing some straw. We'll mix it up and see what happens. So I'm just gonna keep shoveling some dirt in here until it starts to thicken up. Okay, it's getting to diarrhea level thickness. Let me give you a peek, see what this looks like. Well, I forgot to get more gloves at the store, but no worries, we have plenty of glam gloves. I don't know why we have so many gl glam gloves, but uh, what do you think, blue and the blue hearts, is that manly enough? For me, what we did out here with this cob is really a testament to what we have been doing this entire time. Just doing the cob by myself, I think it took at least four days. And the two of us together, I mean, we took a, a difficult task and we got it done in a couple of days. But I really feel like that is emblematic of how we've done this whole thing. It's just two people with similar goals, similar ambitions, getting together, doing what needs to be done, and even the impossible can be possible. I think that's the important part, having the same vision that drives us forward. And then I think we work well together. You know, I remember before we started any of this, you're like, you know what, this might be really difficult. It might put a strain on our relationship even. We're gonna have times where we're really tired or there's these obstacles that we gotta face that are challenging. Sometimes it's the weather, just being out here in the elements, but you know, we gotta remember what's really important and be able to work together through that. And I think we've done really well. Yeah, we have. Now I'm out here right away. I'm gonna start getting the mix going. It must have got pretty cold last night because uh, a lot of ice in this here. It's cold, she's bundled up. You ready to get your hands in some cold, cold mud? <laughs> <laughs> this was pretty much made with ice water. <laughs> so... <laughs> Is that why it feels like I'm picking up like snowballs with my bare hands? 
Yeah, that's probably why it feels like that. So with this cob process, kind of like the earth bags, we've been kind of splitting it up. I've been doing the digging to get the dirt, getting the supplies, doing the mixing, and Jessica's been doing the applying. And so far, that's been working out real well. Now, I just want to bring a particular attention to her skill over here as she's building up this wall. So uh, tell them, uh, what's your technique here? Slap it on and smear it around. <laughs> you heard it here first. That's pro advice right there. Slap it on and smear it around. <laughs> oh man, so uh, we've just completed our third earth bag structure within a year. How's that feel? Awesome. You know, you start off and you have these big dreams and then you're about to start and the task seems really daunting, but then once you're in the midst of completing it, it just doesn't even seem real. But here we are now with the completion of this cob, everything is sealed up. So we don't have to worry about, you know, little animals getting in there or anything like that. And now we can continue on with the build. And I can't wait. A new year, a new earth bag project, so many new possibilities. What an adventure. So probably about two months went into this project. So like we mentioned earlier, this is the third of our earth bag projects. And I think just bringing all the things that we've learned from the previous projects into this one definitely helped things go along. A lot of people have been asking us about the cost, what, uh, what is the cost of uh, building something like this. I'd say for the bags themselves, probably uh, a little over $100, maybe like $120. The biggest cost comes from the lumber, considering all the wood for the joists, the stairs, and all the OSB sheeting. I'd say uh, it's probably close to about $700 for this room. And again, like I said, it's, uh, and it's mainly the cost of the lumber. And lumber prices have just been a crazy lately. That's why I'm glad uh, most of the build is uh, out of dirt. They can't raise the prices on dirt, y'all. When we were thinking about designing for this place, you knew you kind of wanted to go underground for this build. I think one of the like practical reasons for going underground was just excavating that material and then we can use that to fill the bags. I was thinking the bedroom would be an excellent place to go underground. That deep underground we should have constant temperatures year-round and if we wanted to we can make it we can have it absolutely pitch black down there which I think makes for the best sleep you can ever have. So now we're ready to move on and we're ready to move up. Now that we're done with these holes in the ground, now we're going to start building our domes. We got two domes planned, one over each of the underground portions and we'll be connecting them. That is going to be our next big project. We're going to be starting that next. Stay tuned y'all don't forget to like and subscribe. And share this out with uh, anyone else you know that might be interested in this type of building. We'll catch you on the next build, which will be the dome y'all. Ah!